Hey, this is Horner. We're going to take a look at Momentum F3. So this is the one where you have a cart. It's got one, two, three slots in it. It's moving to the right, and all three of these masses are going to plop down inside. So as that happens, if you're a good physics student or if you're a bad physics student, doesn't matter, you'll know that that cart should slow down. <laughs> because if it doesn't slow down, then, uh, well, that's bad. So on the grid below, they want us to draw a graph of the cart speed as a function of time. And then they want us to label relative values of the original speed, uh, time one, time two, and time three on the axis. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start this. Uh, we probably need to put that original speed right at the top. So here's our original velocity. And we're going to say that that happens for just a little tiny bit of time for the cart to get over to pick up the first mass. When it does pick up that first mass, it will have a big decrease in speed. Why do we have a big decrease in speed? Because that mass relative to this mass, you'll notice that they both have a mass of m, this will double the mass. And if it doubles the mass, I'll have a big decrease in speed. Then a little bit of time will go by, and then the second uh, block will pop down. And this one will not provide as much of a decrease in speed because now your total mass is, uh, is bigger. And then finally, there'll be a lot longer time, so we'll make it a lot longer and make it obvious. And then just a very little decrease in speed as that final block comes down and makes contact. Now we need to label all our times. So we should have T1 here, and then T2 here, and then T3 here. Uh, the points for this one, uh, they gave you three points for this. And the first one is you need to have, uh, first point comes from four steps. So if you have four steps in that problem, that works out really well. Uh, the second point is you have a big step, then a little step, and then a smaller step. So you should have a decreasing, uh, decreasing change in velocity as you go through. And then for the last one, the time intervals you'll notice get bigger and bigger. So you should have an increasing uh, time interval as you go through. So that's where those three steps come from. In the next part, they want you to, in terms of V and, uh, sorry, M, -O, uh, M and V O, write an expression for the final speed of the cart and boxes after the final box is dropped into place. To do that, first thing you'll need to do is write a conservation momentum equation. And so you can literally just say the total mass of all of the things in the system times the original speed of everything there. So you'd have to add all these up. So we're going to put the sum in here. Um, and you don't really need the t if we put the sum in, so we're going to get rid of that. We're just going to say the sum of all the masses times their original velocities should be equal to the total mass, since this is a collision that is inelastic and they all come together, times that final velocity. Um, when we do that, we can also then, you get a point for that, but then more importantly, we know that the uh, original mass times, and this is mass 1, uh, times its original velocity should be equal to 4 times the mass, and that's because now we have four things. we get got the three blocks that drop down plus the mass of the cart, and then its final velocity. Um, we can substitute in the total mass here just because the others aren't moving, and we can get rid of these total masses on both sides. And now we're left with the original velocity is equal to 4 times the final velocity. But they want to know what is the final velocity. So we've got to solve this now for final velocity. Final velocity, you divide both sides by 4, you'll get 1 quarter of the original velocity. And that is the second point. Last one uh, here is C. It's not really the last one, but it's the next part. Would the final speed of the cart be different if the slots were spaced closer together? Uh, no, not at all. It should not be. Um, and we know that because our initial momentum, so P remembers momentum, and your final mass, so that's the total mass final uh, of the system, uh, is the same. Is the same. And if it's the same, then your speed would have to, uh, that final speed of the cart would have to be the same. So all the spacing does is just make the, uh, make the cart slow down faster, is really all it is. Um, but it will not change the final speed. So you get one point for doing that one. For letter D, another student works with the same cart, also mass M. 
but uh, it, but uh, that is much longer and has many slots that can carry many boxes. So uh, that student says that if there's enough boxes, it'll eventually come to rest. Is that person's hypothesis correct? And if you were peeing on this one, no would be your pee. Um, the cart block system will always do a couple of things. So there is definitely uh, the system. So here's your reasoning. The system will always conserve momentum. And if it always conserves momentum, because you had an original momentum, that final momentum cannot ever be equal to zero. It's got to be equal to what our original momentum was. Uh, and the second point for this one is the system will slow down since the mass increases, but it will never stop. So the system will slow, and you could also say it will, uh, you just say decelerate. Uh, but you just need to put V can never be equal to, VF can never be equal to zero. So that's your second point. On the next page, uh, it says now the system, students are giving a new situation. You have a cart of mass MO, uh, length of D that it's, uh, is the length of this thing, and it goes under a device that is dispensing water. And as it does that, the water is trapped in here, so none of it spills out. Um, the mass of the water that empties into the cart every second is R. So this right here is how much water is going into it every second. So it's just a rate. They want to know, is it, if you have this equation, notice that the final velocity is equal to the original velocity minus the rate of the water times the distance divided by the original mass of that cart. Is it reasonable to say that this can be in the numerator on the top? So just think of it really in a basic term. If this goes up, what's happening to the final speed? Well, if I add mass to something, should its speed go down? And the answer here is absolutely yes. So you get one point for answering this correctly. You can't just put yes. You have to put yes because more water, so more water will increase R. And therefore, so here is your P. Um, you have more water increases R, that's your evidence, and therefore uh, VF will decrease since RD over MO increases. If this gets bigger, you take more speed from the original and you get a lower final speed. Next one, is it reasonable that the quantity uh, D to appear in the numerator and remember D is the distance, and this one again is absolutely yes. And it's because um, if I increase, uh, if I have D there, the longer D is, the more water I get, and it's basically the same thing as we had here. And we can say because more water will, uh, be, uh, will go in as you have D, and therefore VF will uh, decrease since the RD over MO will increase. So we're not saying D is getting bigger the distance itself, it's just that you're going to get more water in because of that. For the third one it says is it reasonable for the quantity MO to appear in the denominator and this one is also yes. Uh, this one's yes for a different reason though. So if you increase uh, MO here, so the more massive the cart then you will have a smaller RD over MO to subtract from the original velocity. Uh, so it will get slower, but it won't get slower in as quick of a pace is what they're trying to get you to see. Name the feature, a uh, specific feature of the equation that prevents the equation from correctly modeling the final speed of the cart. So remember, we have to conserve momentum. And if you ever get to a place where R over D, sorry, R times D over MO is equal to Z, is equal to VO, and you know that VO minus RD over MO is equal to the final velocity, if these two things are equal, if this is 5 and this is 5, that's bad. Because our original velocity cannot be 0. Uh, and it can't be 0 because we conserve momentum. Okay, uh, So our original cannot equal zero because momentum 
is conserved. And you get one point for that. And that is the end of this huge 12-point problem.